Thank you so much for watching Tomo Fujita Music. Today, I just finished a Skype lesson, students in China, and uh, we've been working so much funk, blues, and this time, a little bit jazzy version of Sonny. He can play really well on a chord progression, and I have several different lessons and chord uh, backing track on YouTube also. So, you see, you understand the chord, A minor 7, and G minor 7, C7, and F major 7, you know, like that, right? And then, B minor 7, flat 5, but I play minor 11. Same thing. Nice. B flat 13. If you want to learn more detail about the chord changes and solo idea, I have a few lessons on the guitar wisdom also. So here. So beginning, I think you can play A minor pentatonic. You can play Dorian scale. But if you play that, there's no character, just a scale. It's all correct, but it does not sound or uh, phrase. You have to make it a little bit more fun for listener to listen. So you don't want to really pick. So I pick pentatonic scale as a first choice, but I add a rhythm. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's really coming from blues or jazz. One, two, a one. What's that? One, a two, a one. Something like that. So you see, that's so-called pick-up phrase. You pick up something so that, hi, I'm here. <laughs> Uh, I'm here. So people, okay, you're here. All right, great, great. Let's do something. So that's the phrase. This is called chromaticism. That's flat seven, five. I'm sorry, I lie. Not a plus seven, minor third. Because G minor. So right there, you have to understand B flat major seventh arpeggio, minor third above G minor. That's one of very popular uh, concept in jazz improvisation. Using major seventh arpeggio, but you know this B flat major seventh arpeggio, but that become flat three. 5 plus 7 ninth and then this this part if you don't understand don't worry you need to learn theory to support performance to understand you know see so right here, right here that's really C mixed it in That's F major seventh arpeggio, 
but for a major <laughs> That's really like a Latin music. Okay, so now that's one. Flat five, flat three, flat seven. Chromatic. Major third, fifth, flat seven, flat nine. easy. Now, second second part, I respect, we respect Pat Martino. So we have to listen Pat Martino, Exit, that's the album. Okay, so, so Pat Martino use melodic minor or Dorian scale with chromaticism like this. So I didn't invent this phrase, I just stole or borrow from Pat Martino, just like everyone we did. So what's happening? Ninth, chromatic, root, chromatic, three, four, five, flat seven. So some other people say, oh, that's Dorian. Yeah, but I don't play six. To me, Pentatonic score is chromatic. Pentatonic score is major seventh and uh, <laughs> ninth. That's what I think. This is a non diatonic note. Non diatonic note into ninth. It's all about analyzing. Just like anything, if you do business, if you learn something, always learn first analyzing digesting then imitating and turn into your thing but we have to learn something to do something <laughs> make sense we can't just imitate so quickly then just uh, you become an imitator and maybe you success three months but after three months question mark so, this is a typical jazz phrase. So, go to minor third again. Then, Always develop and resolve. Not just think of scale and play. If you can do that, millions of people already sound so good. Arpeggio, like West Montgomery. And you, you know this one. my famous lick. But in this case, approach from major seventh. And then I stole this from Joe Paz. Thank you, Joe. So here, so I play over E sevens, almost auto the sound. Auto the sounds means sharp nine, flat nine, a lot of tensions. If you keep playing half step, sounds pretty good. But you have to resolve somewhere, sounds good. So like E, flat 9, root flat 7, sharp 9, major, th sharp 9, major 3rd, sharp 9, flat 9. Very useful. So like... one way to play because there's one major 
But it's it's a little bit too slow for this kind of group because sixteenth phrase, right? Sixteenth notes. So in that case, what you do is you, you wait two beats and squeeze it in, but you keep in same one. So you go squeeze in like. then Michael Stern part methane that's all diatonic then switch then C7 auto This is really typical. Everybody use in jazz records. Chromatic, major third, plus thirteen, root, sharp nine, flat nine. See, that's why. That's already I show you a uh, two auto the phrase like this. Oh, sorry. So you don't have to buy a book or anything. You just because all the records you listen, just to steal two, three of them and turn into. But see, the key is if you learn one phrase, always find out four or five different fingerings. See, guitar, it's uh, difficult because so many choices of notes. That's why if you use a tablature, you are dead. Once you use a tablature, once you decide where to put your finger, and then you get that one answer quick, but that's all you get. You don't, you don't grow from there. So to be free, you have to take a chance. Quick quickly satisfied, yes, get the tab. So be it. I guarantee from today, five years later, 15 years later, you probably same. I can guarantee because that's how you learn. But I teach different way. I teach slightly, not the difficult, but slightly take longer in the beginning, but last longer. I love to teach that way. Here. I don't want to talk too long because probably you're going to leave, go out to get the coffee. That's okay. But result, major third. Now here, chord is B flat 13, so, so B flat mixolydian type of phrase, right? That's all diatonic because if you think B flat or F minor, that's two five into F, E flat major. So center key on that chord is E flat, momentally. So do mi so so basically one major, two minor, th three minor, four major. But what happened is this major third. It's almost like play play guitar. Uh, you use a lot of feeling, but at the same time you have to calculate, really understand what's going on about uh, theory behind. But the theory doesn't come first. Music comes first. You learn music. You play a little bit. Then slowly understand. My hand is talking. And so, I'm getting a little Italian. So, like that. <laughs> like that. I don't know you understand it. Now, this. Right now, I'm using a uh, Music Master bass amp and I have S Mr. Springy Springy or Springy I forgot uh, Lee Jackson I bought that at the NAMM show and I have one control Prussian Blue Reverb I love this one thank you so much Bion you made amazing and then I, I just got this Overdrive pedal from one control, like a white one, and tough to do video with this uh, showing this, but um, 
I wish I can do something. But anyway, so silver, which, which one? Right? Silver B, yeah. Silver honeybee. Like, silver, silver B. Anyway, I will show you this later. I don't think, yeah, probably. I wish I can kind of hold this one, but the you know, cable is a little bit uh, too short. Sorry about that. And then this. This is amazing. My my signature on it. So, so <laughs> yeah, 1963 Duosonic neck and 1958 58 pickup assembly. Nice. So, you got the idea, right? So let me play slightly slow, like... Already I changed. See, that's the problem. I improvise, and I have my own way of phrasing, but every time I try to play naturally, uh, different, but I respect the people can really play uh, composed on the gig. I, I, I that's really important to some of the song because that way every time very very consistent. You know you don't take too much chance. You know so that's good too. Thank you so much. See you soon.